Scott actually played this game before me. You know, he just he yeah, was I've played something. I've played it two times now. I think you've only played it one time. Yep, but it's the just first time I are. played, I won. Right? I did really well. The second time I played, I just sucked yep. so bad. That was awful. I it was just awful. Oh, it was absolutely awful. But the thing is, you know, if you're looking for a board game to play, it won this field as Yar, so it's worth buying. I yeah, mean, if not, if you if you're looking for recommendations to buy board games, you can listen to us or just go to Board Game Geek and play the top twenty. That's pretty much it, right? Because like eighteen of those games are great. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, the way Zoolander works is you got the zoo. And you got to get animals in the zoo, right? And there's three, there's three different patches, well, three different exhibits in your zoo. And you can unlock the fourth exhibit, which you pretty much have to do to win, right? Uh, and you want to fill each exhibit with one kind of animal. You can't mix the animals. You can't have the elephants and the giraffes together. That doesn't work. You got to have, you know, so you want to get four kinds of animals and you don't want any other kinds, right? Every other kind you get, all your extra animals, you have to tie them up in the barn, and that's cost you money, but no one can visit the animals in the barn, so you don't get any points for that. You lose points for paying for animals to stay in the barn. So you want to get rid of those guys. So basically, there's these trucks that deliver animals, and every turn, everyone takes turns. Every round, everyone takes turns filling up the trucks with animals from the savannah, I guess, or wherever <laughs> wherever the poachers collect them from. The zoo next door. Right, wherever the animals come from. So they get piled on the trucks, and the animals mix freely on the trucks. Now, this is the fun part, because you got these you know, five players, there's five trucks. It's kind of like musical chairs of the animals at this point. Every round, you draw one of these tiles, and you think, all right, what truck do I put it on? So say there's a truck that has two monkeys, and I know Scott wants monkeys. I put a fucking bear on that truck. And I don't want bears. So basically, Rim is saying, aha, Scott, if you want, you know, to take these two monkeys, you're going to have to also take this bear. And it's like, ah. And basically, what you do is you look at what everyone else wants, and you look at what you got, and you try to make trucks that are going to be good if you take them and bad if other people take them. But the thing is, on your turn, you can either put an animal on a truck or take a truck. You can't do both. So if you draw something that's really good for you, you have to put it on a truck and then you have to wait for everyone else to take their turn before you have a chance of taking that truck. And you know what? Someone else might take that truck from you. So if you make these really good trucks, someone else is just going to take them and leave you with a crappy truck. And there are some things that can go into the trucks like a coin or a vending stand that are always good. Yep. Just, oh, great. They're just points. So you, but they're you gotta, still not as good as animals that are your your kind of animal. Nothing that depends. Be, and then, right, on top of that, there's some animals. Most animals are too young and genderless, but there are a few animals that have gone through puberty and can make babby. Now, that that's where some of the... Uh, so if you can get, like, a male giraffe and a female giraffe, you get a free giraffe when you get them together in the in your zoo. Now, this is that is the aspect of the game. I mean, you know, this is one of those board games that really brings out the German board gamer style, playing with the theme, making lewd jokes about smashing sheep into wood, and <laughs> it really it really comes out strong in Zuloretto. Yep. Uh, lots of babby making jokes there. The thing is, let's say you don't have room for the babby. No babby. Oh, no, you get him. He just goes in the barn. All right. And he, even if you've got a pen full of monkeys, you got one more monkey in the barn, ah, well, that's, that's points. Yeah. Negative points. <laughs> And then there's the money, right, which you can get from coins and from other things. Like, if you fill up an area of your zoo, you get coins. And basically, you can use the coins as a corrective measure, right? So it's like, oh, shit, I need to unlock the next area of my zoo, so I'll pay coins. Or I need to move these animals. I put them in the wrong section of the zoo. Well, you can use coins. And basically, you can use coins to correct for mistakes that you have made or for things that you didn't really make a mistake, but, you know, the odds and the way things turned out, it didn't go your way. If you get enough coins, you can sort of fix it a little bit. You know, you can use coins to get an animal out of someone else's barn, which helps them out, but it also helps you out because you get the animal you want. And, you know, it gives them a coin also, so then they can correct for something that they messed up a little bit. And the game ends when I think there's no more animals, right? I think so. I forget oh, exactly. Oh, no, no, there's a stack of tiles on the table, and when the bag of animals runs out, you start using the stack... But then as soon as you start using the stack at the end of that round, game over. Now, I really like that mechanic. And, you know, uh, I wonder if we could make a slight variation to Tigris and Euphrates to use a mechanic like that. Where so we just take some tiles out, put them in a stack, and then when the bag's empty, you start using the stack. Yeah, and then we have some sort of, like, end run condition. Like, everyone gets a turn. Mm. Something. Mm. We, I think we could come up with an interesting variation. The game doesn't need fixing, all right? Yeah, it's a little worry stagnant. About, worry about fixing other games that need fixing. 
I mean, the only little bit of stagnant th- stuff I think we, we could mitigate just by making a slightly different board. Yeah, I definitely think the board... Yeah, it's board. just interesting because, you know, you wonder when a game that was 99% perfect was made and then years later someone has another game that has a similar mechanic and they do one thing slightly differently and slightly better. Like, you wonder what effect that would have on the older game. Yep. That maybe they just didn't think of it. Yep. There's not that much else to say about Zulerado. It's a fun, light game. It's not solved by us yet. We only played it twice. Yeah, and, you know, it's a whole lot of, uh, like, so you got, the, got a little bit of that chicken going on. Like, yep. You know, like, like that game where you pass the cards around with the tokens on them. Yep, yep. It's exact. You know, it's like a game of chicken. It's like, all right, you. I'm gonna stay in this. I'm not gonna take a truck. I'm gonna put another animal out there. Which is also a lot like Ra with the Egyptian slot machine. You're like, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, well, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the I'm- difference is, is that in Ra, there's one shared slot machine, whereas yep. in this, it's this separate ones. You know, there's one for each player. So everyone's gonna get one every turn. It's just a matter of which one you get and which what's on it. Yeah. Now, the cool thing is, it was made by Michael Schacht, and he also made another game called Coloretto, which is basically it's, the same it's game. Like the, it's the same game, but it's just a card game, right? It's like a small portable version, and if I'm not I, yep. mistaken. And I think there's an expansion, Aquaretto. I've never seen this in person. But oh, dude, I've never seen or heard of that. I don't know if it's out yet, but a couple of people have mentioned it when I was poking around. Oh, let's see, wait, there's Coloretto, and there's Coloretto Amazonas. Oh, man. There's also expansions for Zuloretto, like a petting zoo and some other stuff. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's a spiel this year winning game. So, of course, it's going to have expansions well, this, and all that. There's three co-worker tiles for Aquaretto. Ah. So there's all sorts of... So Aquaretto lo- has a dolphin on the cover. The Amazonas Coloretto has a the toucan. The regular Coloretto has a chameleon. Ha, 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 ha. The main good thing about this game is that you can whip it out in, like... 20 minutes or a yeah, half it's, hour. Yeah, it's one of those ones that's really quick to learn. It's easy to play. Kids can play it. Old people can play it. It's a great game. Like, if you want to play... It's definitely... I think it's actually, you know, it, to be perfectly honest, right? You always say, oh, if you're introducing someone to German board game, settlers. You know what? I think is better than that. You know, if you're... If someone has only played non-good board games, the first good board game... Well, you know what? It depends. Because it's even more... It's, it's got the same sort of fun accessibility... Carcassonne, but it's easier. I think it depends just as good. on who the person is. I mean, someone like me, before I'd seen a German board game. Okay, yeah, Settlers would be a better choice for a rim type you jump person. Right, you, you know, someone who you know will get it. If you just show them that the game is not random bullshit like Monopoly, mm-hmm. they'll, then Settlers is fine. Hell, Puerto Rico is probably fine for someone like that. But for someone who, you know, you're not sure, Zularetto is probably going to get him because it's super fun, super short. And if you want to play a German board game with a bunch of other German board gamers, but none of you have a game in common, a situation we run into a lot at Nerd NYZ, where I just want to play a game I already know. I just want to have fun, play a game, but no matter what game I pick, at least one person at the table has never played it. So I'm going to have to teach for like an hour. This game takes 20 minutes to teach, 20 minutes to play. Yep. It's really quick to play Zularetto. It's really easy to learn. It's pretty just great all around. Now... One thing, it's going to be on the Wii, as far as I can tell. Really? And I think it's, it's already on uh, the, iPhone the iPhone and the iPad. And the Touch. iPad yeah. We'll see. when. I'll bet they're going to make an iPad version at some point soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's understandable. I mean, it's, you know, how the, this kind of game could become really popular yeah. all around. And you know what? I think that's about it. Short show, but there's not that much to say. Yeah. It's a great game. I would definitely, I'm thinking about getting one of the card versions because that's something you can carry around with you everywhere yeah. and play at any moment, right? It's like Dominion, you could play at any moment, but you could carry a big box of cards. I'm just going to buy Zula. I Runner. definitely need like a couple games that are like the small individual, right? The, the games I have that are just a pack of cards. Yep. You know, like say, or like a Mortar. Flux. Yeah, something like that. They're more complicated, whatever. You know, I really need a game like... You know, the Zularetto, Coloretto kind of game where it's just, it's just a small thing of cards, ultra portable, but you can whip it out and play it with anybody at any time. Just strangers, freaking anybody. Children. Yep. In the parking lot. Old people. <laughs> I think I'll buy Zularetto and Acroletto, though, because I need to own more games that I can bring to, like, an event that is gamey, but isn't, like, super Germany. To just start introducing more people but to these it's, games. But it's still quality. Yep. Because yep. I really, especially now I'm in the city, I have a vested interest in just finding people and being like, look, these games are awesome, play them. Because it'll spread rapidly through social circles that I think can come right back to me and make more players for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try this out. I want to see if I can personally expand the sphere of German gaming in like Manhattan in the next few years. Go for it. Yeah. It's worth a shot.
Mm -hmm. And I can bring it home and play it with like my mom. <laughs> yep. All right, we'll just stop right there. I think that's a good show. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. <laughs>